Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to this next lesson in physics. In this lesson, we will continue to learn about electrostatics. We're now going to be working on the conservation of charge. OK, so objects obtain charges by the addition or removal of electrons. That is very important because a lot of times people used to think that um, objects were positively charged if they had positive protons on them and negatively charged because things had moved. In other words, they thought the positive things were moving away and towards, okay? Meanwhile, it's actually the addition and removal of the actual electrons. Now, the principle of conservation of charge says that in a closed sorry, system, the total amount of charge is constant. The total amount of charge is constant. Right, and that is very important. This Millikan came up with an experiment, which you are very lucky that you don't have to do. I did it at university. And although it is an amazing experiment in the sense that he discovered these things about the electrons, it is a very time consuming and very tedious experiment. But what he did say was, what he discovered was that the smallest charge is the charge of the electron and it has the value of 1.6 times by 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. 1.6 times by 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And this is called an elementary charge. The proton carries the same elementary charge, but obviously it is positively charged. If the proton is positively charged and it has the same value, 1.6 times by 10 to, well, instead of being negative, it is going to be positive, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19. Right, now, now let's talk some more about the conservation of charge. When two charged metal spheres touch each other, electrons will flow from the negative sphere to the less negative sphere and if the spheres are identical okay the charge on each sphere after touching will be the same so to find the charge on each after touching we say q is equal to q1 plus q2 divided by two so if for example we have one um, charged object which has a positive charge of say six micro coulombs and we have another charged object which has a charge of say minus 11 micro coulombs what will happen is when we bring them into contact the electrons are going to flow let me just draw this they're bringing into contact yes your positive yes negative the electrons are going to flow until they have exactly the same charge. Okay, the electrons will continue to go from the negative to the positive until they are both the same size charge. So the way you work it out is you get six times by 10, micro is 10 to the minus three milli micro, minus six, sorry, minus six plus minus 11 times by 10 to the negative six, all divided by two. So then we pop that into our calculator and we go six exponent negative six minus, because the plus sum is minus, minus 11 exponent negative six equals, and then we divide it by two equals and that we press the SD button and that is one two three four five six so it's negative two comma five times by ten to the negative six coulombs coulombs okay or it equals negative two comma five micro coulombs there we go right let's move on so let's look at an example. This is a typical exam example. We got two charges, P and Q, with charges of four nanocoulombs and minus two nanocoulombs respectively. So this is plus four and this is minus two. Are placed eight centimeters apart. A point of charge X is placed another two centimeters from Q as shown in the sketch. Now, this question is on the electric field, which we have discussed before. Um, 
And we've got a couple of questions, but they are basically just a whole combination of different electrostatic questions now that came from the exam papers. Um, and these are all government papers, exam papers that will make sure that you um, understand the questions or make sure that you should practice. OK, so firstly, it says define the term electric field at a point. Now, remember, the electric field is basically um, the field that a point, positive point charge will experience in the presence of an, a charged object. OK, now it says draw the electric field pattern between the two oppositely charged particles. OK, this we actually did in the last lesson, but if this is positively charged and this is negatively charged, then you need to show the electric field lines always go from, first of all, let me raise that. They always travel because they travel as if, as how a positive point charge would experience. They always travel from the positive to the negative electrode, okay? They are always at 90 degrees to the surface of the charged object. Okay, so even if my drawing is not that great. So there are a couple of things that you need to get in the way you'd get your marks. One is that you're showing that it's traveling from the positive to the negative. Secondly, you're showing that the um, rays are at 90 degrees to the surface. And the third mark is for um, the shape of the actual pattern that you're showing that it actually bends towards. Now it says, calculate the net electric field strength at point X due to point P and point Q. Okay, so the net electric field strength is actually the sum of the two. Okay, so in other words, we're saying the electric field strength of X due to P plus electric field strength at X due to Q. OK, now remember that we've got KQ over R squared. That's all it is, is KQ over R squared. This point charge is placed um, from Q. I just want to check if there's anything else I should know about. OK, so the point charge is placed. It says the net electric field at point P. We're going to assume that this point charge is positively charged. So it's going to be repelled by the P and it's going to be attracted by the Q. Right? Everybody happy with that? So now the formula for the electric field strength E, E is equal to KQ over R squared. Obviously your R has to be in meters and the Q is the charge which has to be in Coulombs and K is your constant, which is 9 times by 10 to the 9, which we find on the formula sheet. Right, so now we are going to do is E net. Okay, so let's do it over here. E net is equal to K, which is 9 times by 10 to the 9, multiplied by this charge here, which is 4 nano coulombs. Now remember, nano is what? Many micro nanos, 10 to the minus 9, so it's 4 times by 10 to the negative 9, all over the distance. And this distance is 8 plus 2, so it's 10 centimeters, which is 0, 0,1 meters, and remember that's squared. Plus, now we're just looking at the electric field strength due to Q. It is going to again be 9 times by 10 to the 9. But this time it's going to be negative 2 times by 10 to the, so you don't really have to worry about whether it's plus or minus for the simple reason that this is a negative, um, to the minus 9 all over R, which is 2 centimeters, which is 0, 0, 2 all squared. Okay, and now we need to just get out our calculator and do this. So we'll do the first bit first. So it goes in fraction, fraction, nine exponent nine multiplied by four exponent negative 
nine all over bracket naught point one bracket squared equals Ooh, syntax error. Let's try again. Okay, why is it? that's not okay? Let's go down. First of all, that's supposed to be squared. So let's go back one, delete, and that's supposed to be squared. And then let me have a look at the top line. We have got. 9 exponent 9 times 4 times 10, 10, 10 should work. There we go. 3,600. So that is equal to 3,600 plus, and now we need to work out what this one is. So now all we need to do is change these two numbers. So I'm just going to go back up and change this, delete, to 0 2. And then I'm going to go up and change this to. I'm just going to change it to two instead of negative two. I know it's a negative, so I'm not too stressed about it. And that becomes minus forty-five thousand, <laughs> minus forty-five thousand. So therefore, we have got. Oh, so we've got forty-five thousand minus three thousand six hundred. So we've got 45,000 minus 3,600 equals 41,400. So that is negative 41,400. So what does that mean? It means that it's actually feeling a force, electric field towards, okay, this negative means that it's feeling a pull towards P. Okay, so and the electric field strength is obviously coulombs per meter squared. Okay, coulombs per meter squared because of the units. Okay, so therefore the electric field strength is towards here and the size is minus 41, 4 was 0, 0. Okay, right, now we've done that. Now it says calculate the magnet direction of the electrostatic force of an electron is pointed at point X. Now we've put an electron on here. Okay, and now they want to know what is the magnet direction of the electrostatic force on the electron. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to erase everything. Okay, now let's pretend that there is an electron here which has a charge of negative 1 comma 6 times by 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Okay, and they want the net Electric, electrostatic force on um, if it is placed on point X. Okay. So we had E. Oh, darn it. Um, what was it? I'm going to put my, my calculator. Um, 41,400. Okay. So the size of E was magnitude. Magnitude was 41,400. We know that F, we want F, and the Q is going to be 1 comma 6 times by 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. This is negative and this is negative, which is going to give you the force of a positive number. That's fine, because we just know it's towards the left-hand side, right? We know that E equals F over Q. Therefore, F is going to be equal to EQ, which is going to be 41,500 multiplied by 1 comma 6 times by 10 to the negative 19. Right, so now what we're going to do there is we're going to get out our calculator and take this and multiply it by 1.6. Six exponent exponent negative nineteen equals six point six two four times by ten to the negative fifteen. So you can see why we don't <laughs> see the force that this poor little electron is experiencing. It's some tiny force. So the force is going to be six point six two times by ten to the negative fifteen newtons. There we go. 
let's look at the next example, shall we? Okay, so there we have three charges again that are arranged as shown in the diagram. We've got Q1 in the middle with plus three microcoulombs. Remember that's times by 10 to the negative six millimicro. Yes, Q2, which is 0.2 meters away at minus four, and Q3 at minus seven. Now again, it says calculate the magnitude and the direction of the net electrostatic force on Q1. Um, Okay, on Q1. So we want to first work out that. So do you agree we are actually going to have to do that slowly? We're going to have, because F net is going to equal the sum of F of Q2 on Q1 plus the force of Q3 on Q1. Q1. Okay, but do you agree that since they are vectors, these are the forces of vectors, this plus and minus just means going to be forces of attraction in the one direction or the other direction. So the force of Q2 and Q on Q1 is going to be towards Q2 because of the fact that it is negative and this is positive. The force of Q3 on Q1 is going to be towards Q3 because of the fact that this is negative and this is positive, right? So we need to choose a direction as positive. So I'm going to choose to the right as positive, which means this force is going to be negative. Now we don't have to worry about this plus and minus anymore. We sorted that out already. So now all we have to do is substitute these values in. And we know that F is equal to K Q1 Q2 over R squared. So let's do that. We've got F net is equal to K, which is 9 times by 10 to the 9, times by Q2, which is 4 times. Oh, you know what? This is not actually going to work for me. Um, it's going to be too squished. Let's write it at the bottom here and change color just for fun. So it's going to be F net is going to be K uh, 9 times by 10 to the 9 times by 4 times by 10 to the negative 6. And remember, this is all minus because this is towards the left, which we've decided is negative times by 3 times by 10 to the negative 6 all over 0 0.2 squared plus this is going to be 9 times by 10 to the 9 then this one is going to be 3 times by 10 to the negative 6 multiplied by 7 times by 10 to the negative 6 all over 0, 0,15 squared. Okay, so now what we need to do is put that in our calculator. So I think the best thing is to do all of this in the calculator and then all of that in the calculator separately. Okay, so let's do that now. So, where is this? Okay, there we go. So we've got nine, mm, let's put this in a thingy, shall we? Nine exponent nine, 9 multiplied by 4 exponent negative 6 multiplied by 3 exponent negative 6 all divided by bracket 0 0.2 bracket squared equals 27 over 10, which is 2.7. So it's negative 2 comma 7 plus, now let's do this one. Um, and let's just move this over so we can actually see it. So it's 9, uh-uh, did it again, fraction. 9, ex 9 exponent 9 multiplied by 3 exponent negative 6 multiplied by 7 exponent negative 6 all over bracket 0 0.15 bracket squared 
equals 8.4, which is going to be 4 minus 7 is 7, 7 minus 2 is 5. So it's going to be 5 comma 7 newtons to the right. Okay, towards Q3, towards Q3. Right, okay, that's interesting. Right, now let's move on. Now it says Q2 is removed and is left with Q1 and 3. So this doesn't exist anymore. Whee, okay. It says the two charges are made to touch each other and then separated. Briefly explain what happened during contact. Okay, so we see that Q3 is negatively charged and Q1 is positively charged. So during contact, do you agree that what is going to happen is that the electrons are going to travel from Q3 onto Q1 until they have got equal a number of electrons, until they match. Okay, so that's the plan. That is what's going to happen. Okay, next it says, what type of force exists between these two charges after they were in contact? It would be a force of repulsion. Um, it's also electrostatic force. I'm not 100% sure what they meant, but I'm sure they mean the force of repulsion. Right, now, new question. <clears throat> Two small spheres hanging from silk threads, 100 millimeters apart, okay, carry charges of plus two times by 10 to the negative six coulombs and minus six times 10 to the negative six coulombs. The spheres are free to move, okay. So obviously they're free to move if this is so negatively charged and this is positively charged and obviously they're going to have a force of attraction between them. They're going to touch each other and then they're going to split up again. Okay, so that's basically what we're looking at right now. Okay, so it says calculate the magnitude of the initial electrostatic force between the spheres. So if is equal to k q1 q2 over r squared now remember in this equation we don't have to worry about the pluses and minuses that just shows us that there's a force of attraction because opposites attract so we know there's a force of attraction okay it asks you only for the magnitude for a reason you only want to know how big this force is going to be so that is equal to nine times by ten to the nine times by two times by ten to the negative six times by 6 times by 10 to the negative 6. And now remember that this is 100 millimeters, but we need to convert millimeters to meters. So we need to divide by 1,000, which means that this gives us 0, 0,1, and please remember to square it. The number of my students that just forget to square them, it's so frustrating. They even write down square, they write it down, and then they don't actually put it in the calculator. So let's put that in our calculator. So we're going to go on and no wrong. We're going to go fraction nine, nine exponent nine multiplied by two exponent negative six multiplied by six exponent negative six all over bracket naught point point really one bracket squared equals fifty four over five which is ten comma eight newtons. So it's ten comma eight newtons and they're a bit towards each other. So it's ten comma eight newtons towards each other. Now it says calculate the charge on each sphere after they made contact. Okay. So we know that that's basically just the average of the two charges. So Q is going to equal Q1 plus Q2 over two, which is going to be minus six times by ten to the negative six plus 2 times by 10 to the negative 6, all over 2, which is going to equal what? Okay, let's put it over this side. So, so it's negative 6 exponent negative 6 plus 2 exponent negative 6 all divided by 2 equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
So it's negative 2 times by 10 to the negative 6. And that would be coulombs. Right. So charge on each sphere after the belly contact was minus 2 times by 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Now it says calculate the number of electrons which are transferred from one sphere to the other when they made contact. Okay, so do you agree, it doesn't matter which one we work with, we either have to work with a 2 going to the negative 2 or the negative 6 going to the negative 2. But do you agree the difference is 4 times by 10 to the negative 6? Or if you want to think about it, yeah, we've gone from 2 to negative 2. So basically we've transferred 4 times by 10 to the negative 6 coulombs of charge, right? But now what are we looking for? We're looking for the um, num the what the number of electrons. The charge on one electron is 1 comma 6 times by 10 to the negative 19. So therefore the number of electrons is going to be 4 times by 10 to the negative 6 divided by 1 comma 6 times by 10 to the negative 19. So we're going to go 4 exponent negative 6 divided by 1.6 exponent negative 19. Second, I have to fix that. 19 equals 2.5 times 10 to the 13. So therefore the number of electrons that were transferred was 2,5 times by 10 to the 13 electrons. There you go. Now you know. 2.5 times 10 to the 13 electrons. Okay, yay, not too bad. Hey, now it says a small sphere. Okay, let me just write that down. 2,5 times by 10 to the 13 electrons. Okay, now it says a small positive charge is placed 0.3 meters away from the sphere with a positive charge of 1.6. Okay, new question. New question. Um, let's just erase the link. Okay, a small positive charge is placed 0.3 meters away from a positive charge of 1 comma 6 times by 10 to negative 8 coulombs. It says draw a diagram of the electric field around the sphere, ignoring all, any distortion that results from the small charge being nearby. Okay, so if that's the case, if we're ignoring this, then basically it is just a sun diagram. <laughs> that's what I like to call it. Basically, it is the rays going out from it away from it and always at 90 degrees to the surface. Okay, now it says calculate the magnitude direction of the strength electric field at this position um, of the small positive charge. So we want E is equal to F, I mean sorry wrong, KQ over R squared. So therefore we know it's 9 times by 10 to the 9. The charge is 1 comma 6 times by 10 to the negative 8. And the distance r is 0 0.3 squared. Right, so let's pop that all into our calculator. So it's going to be 9 exponent 9 multiplied by 1.6 exponent negative 8, all divided by 0 0.33 squared, squared, equals 1600. So the electric field, okay, is going to be the strength electric field is going to be, what did I just work out it to be? Sorry, 1600 is equal to 1600. And where would it be? It would be in the direction, direction would be away, away, it'd be pushed away. Right, next, it says a neutral sphere 
sorry, I just want to look for something quickly. I thought I had an interesting question. No, okay, sorry, never mind. Um, an interesting sphere. Sorry, interesting sphere. Okay, a neutral sphere is charged by friction. Okay, so we have a neutral sphere and we charge it by friction. Um, it says, how many electrons need to be removed from the neutral sphere to give it a charge of 1.5 microcoulombs? So effectively, we know the charge of one electron is 1,6 times by 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And obviously, they're negative, okay? But do you agree that means that we've removed 1.5 microcoulombs of electrons? So we've moved we've removed minus 1.5 microcoulombs. So therefore, the number of electrons is going to be 1,5 times by 10 to the negative 6 divided by 1,6 times by 10 to the negative 19. Okay, so let's work that out. So we've got 1.5 um, exponent negative... Six, we get there, divided by, no wait, divided by one point, no, let's try again, one point six exponent negative nine teen equals 9.375 times by 10 to the 12, or 9.3. Eight. It's 9,38 times by 10 to the 12 um, electrons. Okay. Um, just for the record, sorry, I just realized I did something. This year is Newtons per coulomb. Okay, the electric field is 20 Newtons per coulomb. I don't know why I didn't write it down. It's bugging me. Okay, now, the next question says, draw a diagram showing the electric field pattern between two equally but oppositely charged um, point charges. I'm not doing that again. It's this drawing. Wait. Where is it? Oh, I deleted it. Okay, I guess I'm doing it again. Okay, so basically the drawing would be like this. You've got two equally but oppositely charged point charges. You've got a positive and you've got a negative. The, electro the field lines are always going from the positive to the... Oh, Sorry, it's just terrible. Um, it's going to be, here's the positive and here is the negative. The electric field lines are always going from the positive to the negative, okay? And they're always at 90 degrees to the surface. They do not cross and they have to touch the surface of the charge. Okay, moving on. It says, consider a point P um, four centimeters from the minus three microcoulomb charge as shown. Define electric field strength, done already, not doing it again. Now it says calculate the electric field strength four centimeters away at point P from the minus three microcoulomb charge. Okay, so E is equal to KQ over R squared. The K is easy, it's nine times by 10 to the nine. The Q is this charge here, which is minus three microcoulombs. So I'm going to just write that as three times by 10 to the millimicro minus six. And the distance is in centimeters. And what do we need the distance to be? We want the distance to be in meters. So for the distance to be in meters, we need to convert centimeters to meters. How do you do that? You divide by a hundred. You divide by a hundred. So in this case, it's going to be 4 over 100, which is going to be 0, 0, 4 meters, right? So therefore, we're going to go 0, 0, 4, and then what do we have to do? We have to square it. So let's pop that into our calculator. So we've got fraction 9 exponent nine multi mm -mm, not, not 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 plus multiplied by three exponent negative six all divided by naught point 
note four bracket squared equals <gasps> that is a big number okay so that becomes one comma six nine times by ten to the weight I can do this um wait I can do this it's one two wait one two three four five six seven so it's 1.69 times by 10 to the 7. So it's 1 comma 69 times by 10 to the 7 newtons per coulomb. Right, now it says, done that. Now consider a positive 1.5 market coulomb to point charge placed midway between two oppositely point charges, 8 centimeters apart as shown. Calculate the magnitude of the total force on the 1.5 microcoulomb charge when it is placed between the two charges. I don't actually know why I need to. Oh, I see why. Okay. Um, initially, I was thinking, well, if this is a negative and positive and a negative, these would be identical and therefore they would cancel each other out. However, this is a positive and that's a positive, therefore they're repelling, and this is a positive and this is a negative, therefore they're attracting. So I'm going to choose towards the left as being positive. Okay, so we know that F net is equal to F of the left hand side on the middle plus f of the right hand side on the middle okay so therefore it's going to be k well let's just make it nine times by ten to the nine again straight away is going to be nine times by ten to the nine multiplied by three times by ten to the negative six um, times by one comma five times by ten to the negative milli micro six all over the distance this is supposed to be this if this is midway then this distance here is naught comma um naught four okay yeah naught comma naught four all squared okay so do you agree that these numbers are effectively the same for both these sums they're just going to be one's going to be pushing the one's going to be pulling so if i put this in my calculator we have got um nine exponent nine multiplied by three exponent negative six multiplied by 1.5 exponent negative 6 mm. all over bracket naught point naught naught 4 bracket squared equals Okay, so this is 25.31. So in other words, this force of attraction is 25,31 newtons. This force of repulsion is 25,31 newtons. Therefore, F total is going to be, oh, is going to be 50,62 newtons to the left. There you go. Right, grade um, 11, that's all for today. Please try and practice for your exams and have a great day. Cheers.